2014 would be too much. All right, I'm going to call order for the meeting to order and for pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, I think before we actually call the roll call, we have to do the oath right now, right? So right now we're going to uh, swear to office the three newly elected members of the board, Michael Anderson, Michael Rooley, and Larry Duco. Uh, stand up again. I don't want to stand up in front of you. <laughs> Jennifer w would normally be doing this, but uh, she's under feeling under the weather and today underappreciated, so I will do it for her. So, uh, do you, Michael Henderson, Michael Rooney, and Larry Duco, solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio, and that you will faithfully and impartially discharge your duties as members of the Board of Education of the Lutonia Exempted Village School District in Columbiana County, Ohio, to the best of your ability, and in accordance with the laws now in effect and here and after to be enacted during your continuance in said office, and until your successor is elected and qualified. Response would be, I will. I will. I will. I will. Thank you. Well, welcome to the Board of Education. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Henderson? Here. Mr. Rowley? Here. Mr. Uh, Hendricks? Here. I'm going to have to get used to this. I've been bored. Mr. Duco? Here. And Mr. Jenny? Yes, here. Uh, the next agenda item would be the election of officers for this calendar year. Uh, take any nominations for the position of president. I'll we'll nominate uh, Kurt Jennings. Second. Any other nominations or motion to close nominations? I need a motion to close. Motion. Second to close. Second. Okay. Nomination for vice president. I guess I can nominate uh, Mr. Woolley. Second. And again, I'm assuming we have to motion to close that nomination. I'll motion. Sir. Thank you. Any discussion? We just move to the uh, the oath of the chairman. We'll just move to the oath unless you guys have discussion. I don't think we do. Do we? No. Do we assume that we do we vote? Or does it assume there's only one nomination if we don't we can vote? We can vote if you want, but we've already motioned, so we'll just need to vote. Go ahead and do it. Okay. Alright, so that means that Mr. Rowley and Mr. Jennings needs to do the oath of office for the president and vice president. You guys don't care, I'm not going to stand. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, Mike Rowley, and Kurt Jennings do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge my duties as president or vice president in and for the Latonia Center Village School District, Columbiana County, to the best of my ability and in accordance with the laws now in effect and hereafter to be enacted during my continuance in said office and until my successor is, cho successor is chosen and qualified. And responses, I will. I will. I will. So at this point, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to set the time and the date and place for our regular monthly meetings. And on the back of the package, there is a list of dates January through December. The standard meeting would be a, typically the Thursday or the last Thursday of the month, with the exception where there's holidays. And we may at times need to adjust uh, one meeting here and there. And when we do that, if we do that, we'll follow the according uh, notification requirements. I apologize if you showed up last night. I think the agenda showed Wednesday, but the correct date. So, welcome back. Two days in a row. That's okay. It was just a, a minor issue. So, uh, do I have a motion to accept the calendar of meetings for next month? Motion. Second. Oh, I 
think I should have also, it's a reference only, but our compensation will remain the same as it has been, $80 per meeting, um, with no cap at the number of maximum meetings. So that stays the same for probably, I don't know how many years. Any discussion on this? Can roll call? Mr. Lilly? Yes. Mr. Jacob? Yes. Mr. Henderson? Yes. Mr. Hendrick? Yes. Mr. Jennings? Yes. Do you want to take the rest of the agenda or do you want to just keep going through the service fund? <coughs> All right, number five, the service fund. Where is it to provide for the setting aside of a general fund? A sum not to exceed 75 cents for each child enrolled or $7,000. Whichever is greater. Which sum of money to be known as the service fund which shall be used only in paying expenses that the Board of Education actually incurred in the performance of their duties or in their official representation or in paying the expenses of members elect such Board of Education actually incurred in training and orientation to the performance of their duties from the date of election to the date of administration both of office. So now as it therefore to be resolved that the Board of Education of the Latonia Exempted Village Hereby establish the service fund and thereby appropriate for that appropriate purpose of the sum of $4,000 to be incorporated into the appropriations of the district for the 2014 calendar year. Motion for that? Motion. Second. Any discussion? Dan, roll call. Mr. Jacob? Yes. Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Mr. Henderson? Yes. Mr. Rowley? Yes. Mr. Jennings? Yes. Uh, number six is that authorize each board member to elect as own, at his or her own expense to participate in the employee benefit programs of mm -hmm. board insurance as are extended to district employees. So if anyone has that interest to follow through with Jennifer, I believe. Uh, need a motion to authorize that? Motion. Second? Second. Any questions? No discussion? The, the, the next one, <coughs> the CCTC representative, uh, you, can, you can do that. That's on the agenda tonight. That's a three-year term now with the new laws. Um, so if you want to sign, you're the liaison, our liaison, the student achievement liaison. But that will be a, that'll be a motion that the board has been on the agenda. No. Okay, well, let's close out number six, and then we'll... Okay, sorry. Uh, roll call out number six. That's all right. Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Mr. Rowley? Yes. Mr. Henderson? Yes. Mr. Duca? Yes. Mr. Jennings? Yes. So moving on to number seven. Uh, these are committee assignments for the 24 legislative year. We have a, sorry, we have an OSBA legislative liaison. Uh, looking for a volunteer for that. Typically stay close to what Iowa School Board Associations and different uh, things that are happening in Columbus. If you want to be involved with that and bring that kind of information to us, that's a nomination of the five of us. One of us should take that. Anybody? I've had in the past. I mean, I don't mind if no one else wants it. It's nothing. It's over the ball. Michael, do you want something or? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, we put that. That's fine. Yeah. It's, so, Kurt, you're taking that one? Yeah, I put that student, I mean, I put that liaison, legislative liaison trophy right next to the Heisman. Or equal, <laughs> equal prestige. <laughs> so, all right, you want to skip the CTC? Mm -hmm. okay, we're going to skip the uh, CCT achievement liaison. Right, so we're going to do it also. Now we need a student achievement liaison. Again, month to month, we want to bring in all the highlighted uh, academic and other achievements our student body is proudly achieving. So one of us needs to gather and provide that great story every month. Usually I email it to you. John so, used to be really good. At John used to be really yeah, good. So you're, you're, the bar is set high. Yeah. So one of the four of you. I'll accept that challenge. John. Very. Thank you. Kevin, okay, do we need to do a motion or we just write those names in? I don't think there's a motion. All right, well, let's move on to the, the two standing resolutions for the treasurer and the superintendent. I'm not going to read verbatim. It's a rather pointed number eight and number nine in our agenda. Basically, we're, uh, the board is authorizing the treasurer to follow these resolutions regarding the Latonia Exempted Village School District, and also the board is authorizing the superintendent to follow the listed resolutions regarding the Latonia Exempted Village School District. So, do I have a motion for these two? No, wait, wait. Number nine and number ten says. Okay, let's also put number ten. It says a standing resolution for the superintendent and treasurer. 
and this is a little bit more involved just uh, authorizing the superintendent and or the treasurer to purchase services and for architects, attorneys, and engineers, and other professionals, consultants that the school board association, the Buckeye Association, or the school administrators, or other private professional consultants as may be necessary to basically run the school district. Kurt, has any of the language changed in the last couple of years as far as these things go? I think this is boilerplate. It's not okay. policy. Yeah. So basically, this is, so this is a rubber stamp unless there's some gross objection to the superintendent and treasurer. <laughs> So with that, I need a motion for 8, 9, and 10. Motion. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Mr. Willis? Yes. Mr. Tuco? Yes. Mr. Henderson? Yes. Mr. Hunter? Yes. Mr. Jenner? Yes. Thank you. Uh, number 11, do we have any other issues in this reorganization meeting? All right, uh, I move. I need a motion to adjourn the reorganization meeting and then we'll have time to start off regularly. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We don't need to say the Pledge of Allegiance again, do we? Okay. We're now entering our January meeting for 2014. We are skipping the Pledge of Allegiance since we've done it already. Uh, roll call, we assume the roll is still unique. Let's do an official roll call because it's... Okay, let me get to the next month here, or the next agenda. Okay, Mr. Rowley? Here. Mr. Henderson? Yeah, here. Mr. Hendricks? Here. Mr. Duco? Here. Mr. Jennings? Here. Looking for approval of the minutes of last month's December meeting. No. Second. Any questions from that? No questions, if you could just call the roll call, please. Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Mr. Rowley? Yes. Mr. Henderson? Yes. Mr. Duco? Yes. Mr. Jennings? Yes. With that, I'll pass it to Jen for her treasurer's report. I am doing it. Okay. All right. Um, in the treasurer's report, we have bills, counts, payable, as well as financial reports, which include the board reports, free donations last month, $100 from Mrs. Lorch for the baseball softball scoreboard, $78 from Rondinelli Company for junior class, $100 from Mrs. Perkins for the Perkins Torch War Scholarship Fund. And we will approve the tax budget at this meeting for fiscal year 15 to be submitted to the county <laughs> budget commission. Fiscal year 15 revenues will be $7,512,320 and expenses are $7,451,029, resulting in a surplus of $61,291. I have a motion to accept 4A through D on the treasurer's report. Motion. Anyone second? Second. Any good questions or average questions? Filter out the bad questions, but are there any questions? Anybody? Was the scoreboard in the bills already? Did I see a $2,900 charge? We've already, so that already, we have already paid it, yes. How much have we... Um, I just that. sent a thing to Mr. Tallis. We are at $28.50. Any other questions? Roll call, please. Mr. Duca? Yes. Mr. Henderson? Yes. Mr. Rowley? Yes. Mr. Hendrick? Yes. Mr. Jennings? Yes. I'm looking for the clipboard. We do not have anyone that signed in for public participation. Is there anyone <coughs> in Compton basis that would like to interject anything? Other than New Year's wishes? All right. uh, I'll pass it to Mr. Mino for the balance of the meeting. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, Mr. Henderson and Mr. Duco. Very excited. I want to welcome you to the Latonia School Board. And like I said, we're very excited to have two Latonia graduates uh, that are very community minded. And congratulations and thank you for serving. Appreciate that. The first one, uh, several people that we present tonight. Uh, first is um, Dave Reedy from Penex. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Dave, uh, I'll just put it this way. Penex has had a very good relationship with the school system. Uh, from, uh, from Rick, the previous uh, gentleman who had uh, Dave's job, to 
today, uh, and working with Dave and Mr. Woods, with Jack. The um, we got kind of at least we solidified that administration because of the original tax abatement. The check got my first or second year from GE. I did Colin Penix, who wasn't I think quite aware of it, and GI, and I had to spent hours tracking down that check and uh, a good relationship formed and I don't want to uh, speak for Dave but we've had these conversations I think uh, uh, we get along so well because we're very similar. Uh, Penix is a family owned company and Dave and I and Chief and Artie have gone to, to and I think he sees that in our community too. He sees that that, that family oriented community we Tonya has and that's the same background that they have. So, uh, Dave was talk about a little bit about uh, Penex, the expansion, and uh, he and I can explain where the tax abatement, uh, once we get it written up, what it's going to be. So, Dave, 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 uh, board, I appreciate you having me, Rob especially, but I think it's also important I address the community because obviously you guys are very involved in this. Um, so again, Penex Aluminum, my name is Dave Ribby. Uh, we're in the World Trade Park uh, in Commerce Avenue and uh, we're an aluminum extruder and so we make uh, extruded aluminum parts. Appreciate the board's involvement over the many years and we currently have a tax abatement, 100% tax abatement, 75% <coughs> comes from the Pleasure. local village. 25% comes from the school board, and we've had that now for the last 12 years, I think. 12 years, yeah. 10, then we read the Yeah, year. and uh, so we appreciate the board's support of that, that we're enjoying now. Uh, our business has gone well over the last many years. Uh, we acquired the facility from GI three years ago, and uh, we're now at a point of need to expand further. We currently have about 100,000 square feet, and we'll be expanding an additional 170,000 square feet, so it's quite a bit uh, larger. We'll be putting in another extrusion press, some fabrication, uh, machine centers. It will involve about six to five jobs, uh, about three in you know, about a three-year time frame after we get the equipment in by the end of this year. So we're excited. I know our team in Latonia is very excited uh, because they have done very well with the business we have there. And so going forward, uh, we look forward to expanding. And, and a key part of that was a couple, couple things. One is on the state level, uh, they actually approved uh, back in December uh, job creation tax credits in the amount of 156000 And so for us, this is a $33 million investment. It's the largest investment that our company has made. Uh, it's a privately owned, uh, family run business based out of St. Louis. Uh, Penix Aluminum, where I come from, is based out of uh, Wellsville, Pennsylvania, just south of Harrisburg. And so the fact that it's a $33 million investment has meant a lot for the company and for the state of Ohio to come alongside of us uh, meant a lot. And uh, the village is considering their portion of supporting us with the tax abatement, which would be an additional 15-year, 75% uh, from them. And so we're coming to the board with a uh, request of an additional 25% uh, tax abatement. Um, but we have a, happen to have a very special arrangement uh, with the school board. Is that uh, was set up before, and we've continued that, and we we would propose that we continue the same. And that is, the school board would give us a 25% tax abatement. We in return give back 25% to the school, and uh, you may ask why. Uh, but uh, the benefit is, uh, quite frankly, it doesn't go through the state that takes 3%. And so the school board actually comes out ahead by us by giving the 25% tax abatement. We give 25% back. They're actually up. So go figure the math on that one. I'm not sure how the state does that, but um, it's a relationship that we have. Okay, that you we love to continue that. So. Any questions for me about what we're doing from a company basis, what we're looking for in terms of support? You don't know out of all your employees and then the 65 on that you would add on, how many might be from Latonia? Live in the district? Oh, that's a good question. You know, even, even if you don't know now, know, maybe you can follow up. I'd be real curious. In, uh, yeah. Because it'd be nice to see if the job growth fills up some of the empty houses too. Yeah. yeah. That's a good question. I don't know if the answer to the government. What are you guys going to add, Dave? It was uh, the current tax abatement cannot be renewed any further. So once that 15 is the 15 years is done, which will be about three years. Correct. So this this percentage is for the assessment on the new land and new building. Uh, the the other uh, the other thing is that as we went through the enterprise zone agreement, 
and we're pretty sure because we have quite some meetings that we've had, is that it will start with the school board. The school board would make the first, and then it will go to the village. Correct. So um, the once uh, they would get us the enterprise zone agreement, we have 45 days to review it. And at that point. Also, it's going to be very similar to the last agreement. I'm probably just taking some things out. You can waive that 45 days. And I just wanted to say this because uh, we were talking about that agreement might be ready as soon as the next board meeting. So, yeah, our intent right now is we work with legal counsel both uh, on our side, the corporate side, as well as local uh, yeah, counsel. Yeah, we're doing it for right. us in the chair. And, and uh, so as we work that out, uh, intent to get that finalized in two, three weeks in the next four meetings so that you're able to officially uh, vote on that. Out of curiosity, uh, what do you attribute the growth to? Uh, well, a couple things. One, uh, our industry grows about like GDP, and so, of course, the U.S. has had a very slow and steady recovery. So, in that sense, we're growing just with the market. Uh, second thing is the automotive market in particular. There's a lot of conversion of steel to aluminum, and so we're capitalizing growth on that. And that's a key market that we'll be going after with our, our new press. And the third thing, quite frankly, is we're taking share. And uh, we, we have, kind of like we do with our community partners, um, is that it's important to us to have customer relationships that are long-lasting as well. And, uh, and that shows that how they stay with us and how we stay with them. So, great. How much, what are we, how much revenue are we talking about? What's the 25 Percent to roughly, roughly good. What we get right now every year is $12,500. And that so shows up in other, other revenue or? Um, that actually has its own revenue code, and okay. I'll show you where it's at. Okay. Um, but they send the check directly to us, and that's how we <coughs> do the transfer. But those 65 jobs are a lot of those, how many, how many of those are in the office? Our office jobs, as opposed to, there'll be about uh, ten office jobs, roughly five to five. Then let's say seven to ten. They college, five five college five. grads or high school grads. Uh, be college. Be college grads. Yeah. Majority of those obviously are, are uh, production floor. I could use a shorter drive to work. <laughs> To bring your resume. Yeah. Some of our kids have an opportunity to move into those positions. If there's some partnership, we could do that way. But right. just, what, what folks will find yeah. is, uh, of course, manufacturing in general pays uh, typically better than the average wage. Uh, we are very competitive with that. So what's nice about it is the, the <coughs> pay that folks get. And part of it, uh, that's a good point with internships, and I know that. PEDEX has been, as it proved at the last board meeting, been very supportive of the Envirothon team and also working with our science teachers about some things that having speakers come out. So they've been very cooperative. <coughs> appreciate that. Well, we really appreciate you guys, your whole company. Well, thanks for having me tonight. And I can see on behalf of our, our company that uh, it's recognized what you guys have done for us in the past. And we appreciate that. Stay around forever then. <laughs> They, uh, we'll do what we can. <laughs> although, he, I will say Dave said yesterday in the meeting that it was going to be 20% uh, and if I took Go Bears off of my, because he's a Packer fan. Yeah. You know, it's the Chicago Bears, as they tell you Bears. <laughs> but, you know, it's funny because Rob's first started with the, uh, you know, a lot of ways Dave and I get along. And I was sitting there thinking, I think except that one little part. <laughs> 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 I had to get you to the Tony Bears watcher. That's what Rob was tonight. I think it's I know you got to get up early and go back to Wellsville tomorrow, so yeah. thanks for yeah, coming. Thanks for staying here. Thank you. And like I said, Dave stayed an extra night just to see us, so I appreciate that. And breakfast on the road, right? Yeah. Um, I have hit out the board and uh, a, a little sheet uh, about uh, from Lisa from the uh, public, library, public library. There's a little bit of the history of the Detroit Community Public Library has been established by resolution as a school district public library since 1935. It is under the control and management of the Library Board of Trustees, consisting of seven members. These trustee appointments are approved by the local school board of education. These appointments are to be voted on no later than 45 days after the day of a member's term expires 
or after a vacancy occurs, whichever is applicable. Trustee served as a term for seven years and without compensation. No one is eligible to membership in the library board who is or has been for a year previous to appointment a member of the school board of education in that same district. If the school board fails to fill the opening we have to 45 days after the date of the member's term expires or vacancy occurs, the appointment shall be made within the next 14 days by the probate court in which the library is situated. Now that's, uh, that's directly from, I believe, revised code 11, uh, 1135.5. I'm not sure I had that down too. But uh, we talked a little bit. The Library of Trustees maintains a balance of men and women. Now this is uh, pretty much, there is no legal requirement or any procedure or protocol that is what in statute it says. So the library board, however, trustees maintains, and the county maintains a balance of men and women of various ages and occupations, as well as making sure people represent the villages of the county of Washington. Every name offered to the school board of education for approval is a group decision, seriously considered and discussed. Library board members invite anyone interested in serving the library of trustees to attend a meeting or two before declaring themselves a possible candidate. Criteria for choosing candidates include the above and their interest in the library itself. They need to have a library card and support the library in the fulfillment of the mission statement which follows. The present library board consists of three teachers uh, representing the Atonia School District and all board members work very well together as evidenced by the library's recent recognition of being a five-star library by the 2013 Library Journal Index of Public Library Service. The library board of the trustees play a key role in this accomplishment and then the mission statement. So we to pass that on. As I said, the top part is the compliance or is the statute, the higher revised curve. The second one is how our library determines by having people that are in meetings that are interested, that show an interest in the library. And as I said, a key thing is a group decision that they sit down and they discuss. No, and I think it addressed my key question last month was are they extending the opportunity to everyone in the district? in a manner that they know there's opportunity. So, and if they're inviting them in to express their interest in selecting them, that I guess accomplishes that. So. I want to thank Lisa, Lisa for that. Lisa, uh, we're working with Lisa again on literacy night. She's working with the school closely. As a matter of fact, Kevin McTire, I'm gonna, uh, I did not have a library card. Let me tell you, I'm gonna get one tomorrow. So, uh, that's part of the literacy night, uh, part of the literacy dead night program is going to be uh, the, library, the library card. Transportation, transformation team continues to meet. We met this afternoon, as a matter of fact, to monitor the implementation of our race to the top scope of work. The team is developing a schedule for the February 18th waiver day. The waiver day includes presentations from race to the top consultants. And we have quite a, some uh, consultants that are very uh, respected throughout the state coming in on the 18th. We're excited about that. Uh, the OTES and OPES evaluations continue as we approach the end of the first semester. And we, the resident educators and mentors have recently completed requirements for the resident educator program, including videotaping lessons and some other requirements that are, so we're right on track with all those mandates. Next Friday, the staff will complete hours training uh, here at the school. Uh, we are working with uh, John Saldano, uh, Dan Valentine from uh, the Tony Police in Salem Township, Brian McLaughlin from the Director of Columbia County Drug Task Force, and Brad Davis from the Salem Police Department, who's a um, certified um, Alice Trainer. Uh, as we uh, finish the third year of the uh, soccer program, uh, we um, uh, wanted to uh, invite the athletic director uh, and soccer coach, Mr. Rudinsky, is covering the game tonight, uh, to discuss the program. And uh, Mr. McElduff and uh, Mr. Dowling, and I don't know if Mr. Dowling wants to talk first or Mr. Yeah. McElduff. Yeah, I thought the number. <laughs> I thought so. <coughs> Um, thanks for having me, everybody. Mr. Uh, Mio asked me to get some numbers together to give to you guys to kind of show the progression over those three years and kind of a future, what the interest is going to look like going forward. So I printed these out for everybody today. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, that's for sure. Thanks, Yeah. Sure. It basically just kind of outlines the two, I kind of think, main points that we were trying to accomplish with the soccer program. One was growth from a competitive standpoint, and the other was growth from an interest standpoint in terms of the number of kids involved in the program. Um, 
in terms of the competitive aspect of it, that's kind of the top section of what you see here. Um, starting with the record, not just in the record in and of itself, but the number of games that the team has actually been able to schedule has steadily gone up over the course of the three years. And as you can see with this past season, brought us our first win and tie, and that win was actually in the uh, first round of the playoffs. Um, the goals in terms of the competitive, uh, obviously 0-3 jumped up to 23 this year a much higher goal scoring percentage um, throughout this season than in the past. Gave up more, but that was an expected with the more number of games against higher level competition. Um, the bottom half is kind of the breakdown of the second half in terms of the interest level and the participation level. Um, overall going from, and I, this from the first year, from the 2011, was a rough number because I, I wasn't involved in the program, but from what I remember, it was right around 12 or 13 kids okay. mm -hmm. um, in that first year, to 17 total last year, to 21 total at the um, roster this year. And it's kind of a, a, for last year, we actually started the season with only about 13 to 14 kids, and we were able to add kids to it as the year went on to get to that 17. This year, we went into the season with that solid 21. Um, so we went into this year with a good uh, number to start out at. And um, as you can see, it's a pretty, it's kind of been a back and forth, almost just above or below 50-50 breakdown in terms of boys and girls involved in the high school program. Um, what you see moving forward at the bottom is the part that I've really been excited about and talking to people about is what we have coming into the program and years going down the road. We do lose five seniors this year, but we are bringing in 12 freshmen next year who are involved in the eighth grade class right now, moving forward. And then after next season, we would only be losing two more seniors. So the bulk of that, what would be around 28 players next year, will also be coming back for the 2015 season, plus the incoming freshmen from that, uh, for the incoming eighth graders that will be freshmen in that following season as well. So what's the strategy to handle 28 players? The strategy to handle 28 players? In a co-ed or unisex type structure? Would probably be to, and it, there are several teams, and I have talked to several coaches throughout the season that do have JV teams. Because um, I know throughout these first three years, we've kind of been scheduled our varsity team versus some JV teams, you know, United, uh, Crestview, things of that nature. I have tried to move away from that. Um, I basically told Crestview last time I talked to them, if, if their varsity team doesn't want to play us, that's fine. But I'm going to move their JV team off the schedule completely and add two new teams. Because um, I would like to see our varsity team going against fellow varsity teams. So there is an opening. I'm actually, um, the JV coach at Crestview have been in talks. I've talked with him a couple times throughout the season when I saw him at the tournament draw. They were able to field about a, I think he said he got about a 12 game, 13 game JV schedule um, from teams in the area. So that is probably the route we would have to go um, in terms of handling 28 kids because you obviously can't roster or have adequate playing time if all you have is the varsity team there. So I guess John and Marsh, is that typically how we would see a growth of, of a sport be managed or? Yeah, um, I just want to, uh, a lot of those are multi-sport athletes. Um, yeah. A lot of, we have a lot of golfers, a few volleyball players. Uh, we have, you know, we're a small district, so we have a lot of kids doing multi-sport. So um, there's a little asterisk. We won't have 28 people every night. Right. So we'd have to move it around, you know, the golf schedule and the volleyball schedule, but it's doable. Right. Is, it, is it an official school sport? Uh, we, uh, yeah, we, we, last year for them to play, we uh, did uh, make a motion to make it an interscholastic sport okay. so they could play in the tournament. And uh, we've, uh, we'll, we're busy still after the three year review, we're going to talk to the union about that being part of the negotiations upcoming as a, as a supplemental contract. Um, 
the next step would be uh, John has to put on the card as a for the OHSAA. The uh, so right now it is an official school sport. We can continue as is, but we did say three years ago we review it. And we had to make that official. So if we do anything, it would be to not to discontinue as a sport because we had to. You see what I'm saying? We had to have it in to do the tournament. Is there a, so how do, how do we handle it in regards to, and maybe I'm saying this wrong, but do we still declare a primary sport and a secondary sport? Yes. yes. So is soccer, so soccer could be a primary sport, yes. and golf could be your secondary sport or cross country. Correct. And then how does that work? The commitment then is to yes. soccer for all practices, or how does that work? The way it kind of broke down last year with the, because I don't think we had any, we didn't have any football players. We had, it was mainly golf, cross country, and volleyball. Um, the way it broke down was if, you know, if a volleyball, if a girl played volleyball, volleyball is her primary sport. Anytime there was a volleyball game, irregardless of what we had, whether it was a practice or a game, she went to the game. If we had a game on a night that she had practice, she would leave practice early to come to the game with us. On a night we had both practices, I just told them, you know, split your time as much as possible if you have to stay there for the whole time and you can only make it for the last 45 minutes to an hour of ours. I don't want to, I'm not going to step on any toes. I'm perfect. But we practice in the evenings they, for two reasons, really. My work schedule and it kind of eases the burden on them too because typically volleyball, you know, when cross country runners, when they got run, and even football players that they did play, um, they all practice right after school. So us not practicing until 5:30 kind of helps them out a little bit too. Do you know Ryan how many uh, kids are in Lassa as as a feeder uh, in Lassa? Yeah. Uh, yeah. This year we were able. We've over the past since I've been back involved with Lassa over the past three years, we have consistently fielded teams. Uh, the youth 12, 10, 8 level. This past, these past two years was actually the first time we've been able to field a U15 team, which is middle school, 7th and 8th grade. So that being the first time we've really been able to do that, our numbers are getting grown up. Um, I think this past year, each of those teams, U12, 10, 8, all had I believe at least 12 kids on it. So we actually had to move some of the U8 up. He was helping me coach actually at that age level. We had to move some of the kids up because we had so many at the U8 level that there was just no way to get a good number of playing time, so we moved them up. So your feeder program looks strong. Yeah. It, I'm sorry, do you have any, do you have any something indoor? I, mean, I was just going, because I, I forgot to get those numbers together. We have actually started as well kind of an unofficial indoor program that's really obviously not tied to the school and it's really kind of not tied to LASA because LASA's never really been, because of the, our basketball tournament, they kind of stay away from the indoor. But I kind of came in and tried to push that a little bit because I know that that's a, a big green ground. Um, that first year that we did it before I actually came on to the high school program, all we just did was, uh, I think, a U12 team. Last year, we were actually able to field two high school teams, a boys team and a girls team for indoor, a middle school team and a U12 team um, for indoor. And we are on track to field at least those teams, that same number of teams this year, probably actually going to have two middle school teams this year. So we do have a lot of more off-season commitment. I have had several kids on the high school level come to me who I've talked about with interest in um, kind of what you would call AAU soccer, playing in travel and club at the end of spring and in the early summer. So their interest in wanting to grow as players at a year-round level has really come along over the past three years as well. So you would typically what a team would comprise a full roster per se, and obviously eleven fields a team. So I mean, yeah, eleven fields a team. Eight, eighteen is kind of it's a heavy. I mean, that's. 17, 18 is kind of the minimum number. Okay. You're, that's your comfort zone, I would okay, say. Okay, so let's say round it up to 20. If you had a, for Larry's question, if you had a theater of LASA at four or five students per age, per grade level, and assume that they continue 
Mm -hmm. That's the continuance of yeah. just maintaining one. Well, if you, if, and if you, because that's kind of where we're at at those younger ages right now, is about at least five girls, four to five boys per grade. Right. So down the road, once you see start to see some of those classes coming in, when you project that out, you kind of at that point project out into you know a 17 to 20 like, grouping of boys and a 17 to 20 grouping of girls, which is a whole different thing down the road. But long term, that's kind of where you see that sitting at. It'd be nice to see what, like I know the larger schools, Columbia, for instance, but if they had any history that would show their progression in numbers. Of numbers? Yeah, if you had a chance outside of this meeting to go yeah. to research how they saw their growth and yeah, what they did. Well, I, I know Crestview, because I, I, I know a lot of kids actually played for Crestview, actually started out playing, and Crestview was number one team in the district, one of the top ranked teams in the state. A lot of the kids that played for them actually started out playing for LASA. Um, so after our tournament game, I spoke with the coach, spoke with, and all their nothing but high praise because they said, you know, we were right where you guys were, you know, what was it for them, I think about eight years ago. You know, they were a varsity only team, no JV. Um, they were able, because they had more numbers, they were able to split off into a boys and girls program quicker. But it, it does, it did mirror in terms of how they started, um, similar to how we're going right now in terms of growing the numbers, splitting off building those numbers, adding JV teams, and you know, moving up now to really one of the top teams in the country, or uh, county. No, I, I, John would know better than I. Uh, Kurt's question is, uh, this hasn't affected other sports. Well, we haven't had to consider stopping another sport for student choice purposes. No. With, with this growth. Okay, so. No, I haven't seen that too. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure. Ryan was just here because we're reevaluating. But yeah. is there some type of vision or long term plan that says, I mean, I would have thought three years ago when we started, we'd be looking at a piece of paper right now that says, here's was our, here was our goal three years down the stream. Here's where we are. Here's what we accomplished. Here's what we, where we thought we'd be. So now, Ryan's standing here. Do we have a vision? And I'm all for soccer because yeah. I see the kids as participant. I bet you there's more young kids playing soccer than baseball. Probably. Mm -hmm. But but so are we gonna are we gonna yeah. commit money to put in a soccer field? Is that our vision? Yes. Uh, is the vision is the vision to have two teams. Yes. The vision okay. the vision from the beginning three of us have a JV and a varsity team. And I have that in three of it. As far as is that four teams drop is the vision to have four teams or is the vision to be like baseball and softball? We would be more than happy to have a good girls soccer team, a good, well, I mean numbers, right. to support boys varsity, girls varsity, if we can get JV teams good, but. Right, yeah, the vision was having boys and girls, two okay. teams, and uh, at the time we did that, uh, we even talked about the need for possibly a second coach as the numbers increase. Uh, <clears throat> at the time, the facilities were not discussed, but we've t over time from that original plan, we have discussed uh, using the, uh, John and I have discussed with Russ, using the varsity football practice field as a game field and we tried to get uh, but the weather turned on someone to look at that. Also the baseball field, and I know Mr. Henry, you're part of that, uh, developed a baseball field. They have agreed not to put a fence, outfield fence, so that grass area all the way down to the discus where it could be utilized for possible practice areas. Mm -hmm. And then the game field on Tuesdays and Thursdays was a vision that we had talked about. And we also, the library, we, we've used we're fortunate enough to be able to use that field as well. Yeah. Um, as we go forward, like I said, uh, or like you were saying, the um, the numbers in the 11th play, it still is going to be hard to, you know, we like to get two teams, um, but that's probably not practical as of now, correct? Or yes. In, two, in terms of two teams, like the boys and girls, JV or no, boys, boys and girls is what we first discussed. Uh, boys and girls. In terms of immediately, like this season. No, I'm just saying, does it as, as it grows? Is that a oh no? Point? I don't. I I said if you were to say you know in another three years after evaluating it, I I think you would definitely be able to seriously look at the option of. But right now, it's be kind of like teams, boys, girls. Yeah. 
Plus the boy and girls and Jamie. Because yeah. then you have the flex plate moving up and down co Yeah, yeah, because that, that's that's the thing. If, if you kind of and the little bit of looking I did on the state site and whatnot, um, if you if we were kind of jumping too early into the boys girls mm -hmm. split, and then we ran into problems with different sports and not having certain numbers. With the advantage of having a co-ed varsity JV, like Kurt was just saying, you can move up and down freely, obviously, just like any other sport. Once I, we With were to make the decision to pull the girls out of the co-ed atmosphere and put them on their own team, once they're declared that, if I were to come short three or four guys one night because they have a golf or anything of that nature, I cannot pull any of those girls to help with that guy's team. So it makes sense. So that's down the road. Yeah. Yeah. That's the final piece of the puzzle then. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, seeing that like I said, you know, three years from now is probably in my opinion a feasible time when you might be able to look at that option. But Renix is gonna hire sixty five employees from Brazil with five kids at all the uh we we're also kind of boy uh, Varsity and JV. Yeah, yeah. And I did, obviously, because it's, you know, unofficial numbers that weren't actually on teams last year, but that 28 question mark is from my talks with kids, could possibly be a lower number because there ha I have had, you know, just through word of mouth and interest and friends playing, oh, I either want to come back because I didn't play last year, I haven't played before. I want to come out and give it a try kind of thing. So there is that buzz amongst the students themselves about wanting to try it. So you could possibly see that number be possibly even higher. So okay, I'm glad you restated that because it sounded like you said you could see it go lower. You could see it go both either way. Either way, yeah. But then at what time of the year, John, would you need to know if we have enough for you to structure a JV schedule, commit to those schools, and then... If Ryan's only got 21 again, or if he's got 30, great, but and then you're ahead of the game. There's a league schedule right now that we follow, plus we have other teams that we play that are doing yeah. the same thing. We are trying to establish soccer. Um, the difficult issue is there, we had issues this year with getting referees. I mean, if you don't schedule ahead of time, and we schedule one on a Saturday during the season, you can't get referees there. Hmm. So, you know, you have to almost schedule six months ahead of time to guarantee that you'll have referees there. Is, there's a short shortage of referees, and that, that creates an issue. And uh, to be honest with you, right now, place to play. I had, uh, when I went down to get the referees their uh, information to pay them, they said, that even though it was on the small end of the spectrum, they were uh, complimenting us on our field down there. Um, it's too bad. So referees, place to play, that's all all an issue too. No, I just no, it was just part of the uh, I think there's a financial statement that, that we're going to be going out as well as this. Uh, we've said that for three years we review. Uh, at this point we'll just continue um, with the next step which is negotiations and um, continue through the year. We did probably, this was part of the deal of that three year plan. I can send that back out as a review. And we're going to do it now because we're going to post those positions later this month for the soccer coach. And we're going to have that before we did that. And, uh, thank you. <coughs> okay. That you folks have a new business. All right. That's the new business. Uh, 9A personnel uh, approved by uh, Dana Schneider as a winner of sports worker for the 2013-14 season. Separate than number two? Yeah. I need a motion on A1. Motion. Second. I just second it. You second it? Yeah. Yes, you can. Any discussion on Dela? Roll call, please. Sir Yes. Sir Yes. Sir Yes. Sir Yes. Sir Yes. 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 Yes.
uh, did, uh, to appoint Doug Jones to the CC, CC Board of Education in the Newtonia School District for a three-year term, commencing with the uh, Career Center uh, January Board of Education meeting. I have a motion on the motion. Issue. I need a second. Second. Questions? What's, what's up there? I have brought Mr. Atkins here tonight, the uh, superintendent of the Career Center, because of the new laws and uh, what's the pay for the board members at the Career Center? With the change with House Bill 59, it changed the entire process of appointment to Career Technical Center boards. No longer do you have to be a member of the local board. The local board, though, still has the authority to appoint to the Career Center. It changed from a two-year to a three-year term. Doug finished out his term in the Career Center technically in December. We had different legal opinions preceding that, and it requires for your representative to be appointed now, again in January, for a three-year term. That representative has to have background uh, in career technical education, which Mr. Jones would have for being a previous board member. They also have to have experience as in a field such as what Mr. Jones has had working for the U.S. Postal Service. They no longer have to reside in your school district. They just have to be representative of your board. It's who you trust to be a representative to the Career Technical Center. A couple questions. One was, what's the pay for that? The pay is we establish our pay rate the same as you do. It is the maximum allowable by law. We don't establish the eighty dollars, but we go to the maximum. What, what is the max? One fifty? Uh, I believe it's one twenty-five. It's one twenty-five. And you max that out at twelve, or is it just? Yeah, we we only have twelve meetings a year. <clears throat> and does it you does it require a degree? It does not, not require a degree. degree. Okay. And it's an appointment. It doesn't require you to be a registered voter, okay. but not necessarily in the community. When's your first meeting? Our first meeting is January fifteenth. If. If a student from Wetonia goes to the CCCTC, what's the financial ramifications? Do we, do we, it used to be you lose your state foundation money. Is it, how does that work now? We get a portion of the foundation money. We, 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 we count, we count them not as a one ADM. I think they're counted as a point two. Is that right, Joe? Yeah. What's a, what's a student worth? Seven thousand. Um, it, it, right now the share is fifty-seven forty-five, but we only get um, the state share of that, which is sixty-eight percent. Okay. And uh, Mr. Atkins, the, the Chris Center also does for our half-day students pays for the busing. Yes. Keep the busing to take out the back and forth. Okay. Um, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. The other question I had, Mr. Atkins, uh, we would probably work something out with Mr. Jones to report back to the board on a monthly or a bi-monthly. Yes. However, your board would determine that Mr. Jones should come back. Mm -hmm. Then I would work with Mr. Jones along with you, Mr. Mino. And Mr. Jones is offered at any, at any time to be able to come back and report to the board, which I highly recommend that he would come back and give at least a buy every two months a report on what's going on at the Career Technical Center because you have a big investment in the Career Technical Center. You are one of my partner schools. It is your school too. And I'm thankful that Newtonia as a school district has a great buy-in to the Career Technical Center. Uh, you are, all nine schools do a great job but for science that Newtonia is, you do Major commitment. Thank you for that. Okay. We have the motion. Do we want to? Do we want to make this available to the community? Uh, or do we, or, or we, we don't want to do that. You I mean, mean, on, on, I mean, we asked the library board to do that or make sure they did that. 
No, we're, we're not doing the same thing. Well, and I was thinking the other way around. It's a good question, but the only reason Doug's name is on this is because of his history on the same position, but in the capacity of an elected board member. So yeah, the, the, I'm, the, I'm okay. okay. So, okay. yeah, I don't know. I'm, okay. I'm just saying, no, but I think you're going forward. When, when Doug wants to, position. Yeah, when he wants to not do this anymore, I'd almost think that we would want to let the voters at least put people on this board, and then we go back to the old method and choose one of us, or one of the five who's there at the time. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. This is my opinion. Okay. I don't want to do it myself. But, um, roll call on A2. Mr. Rowley? Yes. Mr. Henderson? Yes. Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Mr. Jacob? Yes. Mr. Jennings? Yes. Okay, uh, B1 supplemental approved. Uh, Keith Janowski as the assistant weight room coach for the remainder of the 2013-14 school year. Motion on B1. Motion. Motion on B1. Motion. Second. Thank you. Questions? Comments? Uh, a discussion real quick. Um, the, um, on your on your papers that your packet you said you had that it was in progress. I want to tell Mr. Mapudov today, thanks for all the work. Dr. Leah Brennan this afternoon. You guys straightened out. Okay. It's approved electronically and he has his pass. So thank you for the help. And I, that was about 4.15 today. We got that straight out. Okay. And she said the certificate has been issued. Okay. Is, do we have cameras in our weight room for any no, more events in the monitor? Can we add one? We can. We'll it seems like there's liability for in injury and incident as opposed to a hallway, too. Would be. Right. There's one in that hall. He has it. I it has nothing to do with Keith. I'm just no, <laughs> I know. I'm making a note. Any other questions or comments about this motion? Did you get, did you get your questions answered? Yeah. Uh, Jen, roll call. Mr. Henderson? Yes. Mr. Roy? Yes. Mr. Jacob? Yes. Mr. Hendrick? Yes. Mr. Jennings? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, last item, uh, G1, approve Will Lutz to continue one continue on for another term at life and return to public library as a library trustee. Motion, please. Motion. Second. Questions? Okay. Roll call, please. Mr. Jacob? Yes. Mr. Hendrick? Yes. Mr. Henderson? Yes. Mr. Rowley? Yes. Mr. Jennings? Yes. Thank you. Uh, are there any miscellaneous items? <coughs> Michael? No. The other Michael? You guys can't sit next to me. Blair. Michael Squirt. Yeah. She's, she's got to break up the Hendricks. And Hendricks. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to get real confusing. Yeah, yeah I guess. Hendricks. Not Hendricks. The Hendricks. Yeah, Michael oh, Michael or Henderson Hendricks. 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 Hendric